my GCSE biology syllabus statement 310 looking at the role of estrogen and progesterone in the menstrual cycle. Estrogen and progesterone are both examples of hormones. A hormone by definition is produced in a structure called an endocrine gland. The definition also requires that the hormone will travel through the blood from the endocrine gland to its target tissue. At the target tissue, the hormone will have an effect. In the case of some hormones, including estrogen and progesterone, there may be multiple effects. In the diagram, this structure here is the ovary. The ovary is the endocrine gland for estrogen. The ovary produces estrogen, which flows through the bloodstream to the lining of the uterus, where it has effect number one. If we look at this diagram here, of the thickness of the lining of the uterus, this is the endometrium, we can see that in the first half of the cycle, the lining becomes increasingly thick. This is the effect of estrogen. Estrogen is produced in the endocrine gland called the ovary and travels through the bloodstream to bring about the thickening of the wall of the endometrium. Effect number two for estrogen is that it flows through the bloodstream to our brain and there it brings about the release of a second hormone. This hormone is known as luteinizing hormone, abbreviated here to LH. The production of luteinizing hormone reaches its peak at round about day 13 in the cycle and this actually causes the ovary to release an egg. The egg will come out of the ovary and into the oviduct where it is now possible for fertilization to occur. This is effect number two of estrogen and occurs here in the cycle. Before continuing we need to draw a small diagram, slightly larger diagram of the ovary and think again about the first half of the menstrual cycle. During this period of time a circular structure known as a follicle becomes larger and larger and inside this follicle is the egg. It is actually the cells around the follicle which are producing estrogen. The follicle reaches its thickest, its largest point round about day 13 when luteinizing hormone causes the wall on the outside to rupture and the egg is released. This is the same as was described here. So luteinizing hormone causes this process here which of course is called ovulation the release of the egg. Once this process is complete the now empty follicle changes function. It actually changes color as well and develops a yellow color. This gives us the name corpus luteum which is known as the yellow body. This yellow body is known to produce progesterone. So the ovary and the corpus luteum in particular is the endocrine gland for progesterone. 
progesterone travels through the bloodstream to the lining of the uterus to give us effect number three and that is to maintain the lining of the uterus it prevents the lining of the uterus from breaking down in this condition it is possible that a fertilized egg could implant into the wall here and develop into a pregnancy however if this does not occur if there is no implantation of a fertilized egg the corpus luteum breaks down and progesterone levels fall the fall in progesterone levels leads to effect number four which is a breakdown in the lining of the uterus which we know as the menstrual period or menstrual bleeding this marks the end of one menstrual cycle and the start of a new menstrual cycle when the lining has broken down completely the cycle and the change in hormones begins once more 